Hey everybody, Techie101 here, and we have talked long enough about those filthy lawless pirates in, in past videos. You know, we've we've talked about them and their their Jolly Rogers and their unique laugh styles and, and their superhuman abilities given to them by magic fruits and all that garbage. No, now it's time we talk about the real heroes of the One Piece universe. I am, of course, referring to the Marines. Here are the ones that are going to put an end to all this piracy shit. And who's at the top of the Marines? The fleet, the current fleet admiral, former admiral, one of the powerhouses, one of the strongest characters in this series. I'll tell you who. Sakazuki, also known as Aka Inu, the Red Dog. This guy is the ultimate hero of the One Piece universe. He's gonna wipe out all the pirates, commanding all of his marines. They're gonna take out the Yonku. They're gonna they're gonna rule over the Grand Line in the New World, and justice will reign supreme in this perfect utopia. The world government in control of the world. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, so obviously. You and I both know that that's bullshit. But you also have to remember, in the context of the One Piece universe, to like the most of the population, like the normal civilians and everything like that, that's the truth. The Marines are the good guys. The pirates are the bad guys. This series follows criminals. Like this is the main, the main cast of this series are all criminals. Um, not really, but in the government's eye, they are, and the world government, they're in control of the world, and the Marines are their, one of their three superpowers, you know, you have the three superpowers that kind of maintain things in the world, um, actually, the world government's not really part of that, it's the Marines, it's the Warlords, and it's the Yonko, and then you have the, you know, the, the, the world government that's in control of the Marines, you know, and they're the ones that, they're the three powers that kind of maintain a somewhat unstable balance, but do maintain a balance in this world. If the pirates take over the world, it'll be mass anarchy. But if the world government takes over the world, it'll be something not that great either. Before we get into talking about Aka Inu, though, I need to discuss a very important theme in the One Piece universe. This is something that Oda is uh, uses quite a bit, and it's an interesting little duality. It makes you, it makes you question morals and all that shit, and that's, of course, uh, justice. The idea of justice. You see it emblazoned on the back of all high-ranking, uh, you know, Marine officers. You see it all over Marine Ford, and, and, the, and the Marines are always talking about it, you know, justice. We have to uphold justice. What is justice? Well, justice is painted with a very, uh, very broad brush in the real world. It's something that's somewhat subjective. The general premise is there are laws in the world. Anyone that would go against those laws must be punished to a degree that is uh, fair. Fair. Justice is fair to those laws being broken. For instance, if you kill someone, we might have to look at, like, the death penalty. If you rob, if you steal a pack of Oreos from Walmart, you know, you don't look at it like, all right, you need to die for that, you know, because that was pretty bad. You know, it's just, it's fair, you know, you punish evildoers depending on the crime that they've committed. That's how justice is supposed to work in our world. In the One Piece universe, it's not like that in all, at all. Here's how justice works in the One Piece universe. Um, the world government is in control of the world, obviously, so they're the ones that get to determine what justice is. They're the ones that say what justice is, and what is what is evil, and what is good. And they say piracy is evil. So all pirates are criminals. All, every single one. Doesn't matter what their goals are, doesn't matter what they do. The second you raise a Jolly Roger, you, you're scum, you need to die. That's what, that's what the general premise is. No mercy for pirates, right? And that's, of course, as we see throughout the stories, that's not true. Not all pirates are horrible. Okay, most of them are, but look at the Straw Hats. The Straw Hats aren't not going around raping and murdering, you know, burning islands down. Okay, Nami is kind of a, you know, she, she's a she's a burglar. She steals shit. But, you know, whatever. That's not, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> but, um, no, their, their overall goal is, you know, to, to live out their dreams. They want to go out to the sea, have an adventure, and make their dreams a reality. You know, Luffy wants to find the One Piece. Nami wants to draw a map of the world. Zoro wants to become the greatest swordsman. Sanji just wants to find the All Blue. You know... Compared to a lot of other pirates, you know, these are very innocent dreams. You have other pirate crews, like uh, like the Heart Pirates, like Law's Group. They're not trying to do anything, you know. They're not going to, to islands and killing people indiscriminately just because they're pirates and they're drunk on their own fucking power. Um, but for every good pirate crew, there's at least a hundred that are like that. You know, look at kid, look at kids' pirate crew. You know, they kid went to an island, burned it down, and like crucified like uh, all the civilians and shit. Like that stuff needs to stop, and that's how the civilians mostly. 
see pirates and they see like okay the marines are justice the problem is it gets taken way too far it's this iron grip because the world government is corrupted we already know that the world government is corrupted as shit and they're the ones that control what is just in this world that's just a recipe for disaster right there um but you have the marines which they're ultimate fighting force the ones that go throughout the world and enforce this justice and uh a lot of the high-ranking marines and a lot of the marines in general have their own their own take on justice their own way they they view justice and um what what's the what's the scariest variety though of justice is the as absolute justice and as kuzan stated uh aokiji absolute justice sometimes drives a man insane and that is the he was referring to sakazuki he was referring to sakazuki there so I think it's really easy to look at Akainu and say he's evil. He's like, he's a horrible person for what he's done in the past and his actions, you know. Um, and I think that's uh, very uh, indicative of what he did during uh, Ohara. Let's start with that. That's the first time in the series we see uh, Akainu. We didn't get his full image or anything like that. He was a vice admiral at the time. But we saw his actions and what he did. And uh, I think it's very easy to look at, okay, he's an evil motherfucker. And, um, you know, he, he's, the, he's the villain of the story. And yet he's the commander of the... Apparently the most righteous fighting group in the story according to most of the civilians so uh, during uh, the backstory with Nico Robin you know Nico Robin is from an island Ohara which is in the West Blue and th they didn't do anything wrong they're not an island of like thieves or murderers or anything like that they were scholars on this island they're the ones that collected all this information all this knowledge around the world they had this huge tree that existed for 5,000 years that the tree of knowledge that collected all this all these books and everything they were archaeologists that just wanted to study the world. And, uh, however, this is a problem because knowledge is dangerous to the world government because the world government knows something. Something happened in the void century where the world government came to power and the information with that void century is, is very dangerous because if someone figures it out and if someone spreads the word, the world government might not have an iron grip on the world anymore. They might, they might actually become, they might get overthrown. So that's the bad thing, right? So uh, the world government said it's an outlaw. It's they outlawed it. You're not allowed to study the void century. You're not allowed to study the poneglyphs. You're not allowed to try to read the poneglyphs. If you attempt to do any th such thing, you're an evildoer and justice must reign supreme. You must pay for your actions, which basically means you must die. So they found out that there was uh, these archaeologists on Ohara studying the poneglyphs and doing all this illegal shit. Um, so they said, all right, Buster Call. The Buster Call is the ultimate Marine, you know, hammer down. I'm going to put a fucking nail on this coffin. Send an entire fleet of battleships led by five vice admirals, and they just nuke the island. Nothing is left. They blow it up. They take, they, they, they keep bombarding it with cannonballs and mill and bombardment until it's um just fire and ash, and then they burn the ash. That's a Buster Call until the island itself is like nothing but a wasteland. They, they, they care so much about the Buster Call, and it's like it's absolute authority. They will even initiate a Buster Call on their own judiciary island this is an island that is like one of the most uh important places to the world government and to the marines but they don't care if a buster call is summoned they'll blow it up it's like the ultimate authority so a buster call was summoned aki inu was one of the vice admirals at the time that led it now it was the archaeologists that were the the vict that were the ones that broke the law here so they're the ones that need to die but remember ohara it had normal civilians on it too, just normal, you know, women, children, elderly people that had nothing to do with the archaeologists, had nothing to do with studying the Void Century. So there was an evacuation ship that got all those people off, but then Akainu was like, you know, if there's even a 1% chance, not, fuck that, if there's even a 0.1% chance that any of the archaeologists could have snuck on that boat, the whole mission was for nothing. Okay, sink the evacuation ship. Women, children, elderly people, completely innocent civilians, blow it up, destroy it. Don't you think that's a little excessive, Akainu? No, justice must reign supreme. That's his. That's his brand of justice. Absolute justice. Now, give, now, given what that that's pretty fucked up. That's pretty fucked up. Just killing an entire island's worth of of, of innocent civilians just for the just because there's a chance, just a chance that one of the archaeologists could have gotten on that ship. That is his brand of justice, and that's messed up. And you look at that, and he's like, that's evil, that's horrible. Given how Oda works, though, and given how he sets up characters, I think it's fairly fair to say that at some point in the story, we're going to get a backstory for Akainu, and we're going to find out we're going to find out what happened to him. Something happened to him as a child where he adopted this sense of absolute justice. Sometime, and maybe not when he was a child, but something in his past happened. That's how Oda usually does things, but... Yeah, he is, he is basically the ultimate, 
he, he's the one that does not care who you are. You know, he, he, it almost, it, it's actually almost poetic in a sense. He like, he like becomes justice. He removes all senses of sympathy and empathy. And, and the only morality he has is the morality that is given to him by his higher ups in the world government. He views the world government. That's the ultimate authority. Whatever order they give me doesn't matter what it is. I'm going to carry it out. This is the kind of motherfucker where if like the world government says you need to kill that baby because it's a threat to the world government, Sakazuki would be like, all right, we'll break out the marshmallows. It's going to be toasty. You know, that's the kind of guy he is. He just doesn't seem to have any sense of freaking empathy for anybody, you know? So it's like, it's poetic. He removes all senses of who he is as a person, as a human being, and he just becomes a hardened shell that's just like a robot in a sense that just carries out the symbol of justice. He becomes justice incarnate. That is Aka Inu to a T. Getting a little bit heated up here. Heated up. Okay, well, that's a good segue. Let's talk about his devil fruit. So, as the red dog, uh, he, he was actually the last of the of the admirals to, you know, we found out what his devil fruit was. But we saw how um, it was interesting in terms of theories because we had uh, the epitaphs of each one of the uh, the admirals. You know, uh, um, Aokiji was the blue pheasant. Kizaru was the yellow monkey. And we saw how, okay, Aokiji can control ice. Blue. Cool. Kizaru can control light. Yellow. Well, light's not always yellow, but you know what I mean. I'm not going to get all physicky on you. Um, so then we have Red Dog Akainu, and we're thinking, oh, red. Okay, what could that be? And I, I remember reading a lot of theories that his uh, he had like a blood blood fruit. I think that was pretty badass. I hope that happens at some point in the story. But no, his ability is uh, magma. It's the Magu Magu no Mi. And um, it's probably in terms of just straight up physical power probably makes him the, the strongest in the Marines in terms of physical ability, uh, in terms of physical destruction, I guess I should say. Uh, Kizaru is obviously the fastest, no question about that. Um, and there's other characters in the Marines we don't know about yet. We don't know their full capabilities yet and everything. Uh, Sengoku, we don't know everything he can do, what his full extent is and his Buddha form. Garp, of course, we haven't really seen him fight super seriously in the series, uh, of course. But right now, in terms of just, in ter terms of Devil Fruit mastery, hockey, destructive power, it's, 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 uh, it's Aki Inu all the way. It's Aki Inu all the way. So, uh... His uh his devil fruit, I mean, it's it's pretty dangerous. I mean, his his abilities volca he has the power of like the core of the earth at his disposal. Um it's a it's a greater devil fruit than the uh, the Mara Mara no me that uh, Ace had. Devil fruits have like different uh, like superior fruits and inferior fruits. Not to say that that makes them necessarily stronger, but there's like like how um like how Mrs. Valentine's Day had the Kilo Kilo fruit, so she can control her weight. And then you have uh, Maka Vice, who had the uh, the Ton Ton fruit, which is like just a superior version of that. But it all comes down to training at the end of the day. Uh, so, you know, Ace had, you know, fire, and then, you know, he was, you know, punched right through the stomach by Aka Inu, uh, who had magma, so it was just superior. You know, magma is more superior to fire, so that's how Ace still got damaged, even though he was, you know, intangible at the moment. Um, on top of that, Aka Inu, know also has hockey you know he's a he's one of the strong he is the you know the, the top ranking marine right now um there are ranks above him like kong is like the the commander in chief of like the, the the world government's you know military expanse and shit like that but right beyond kong is the goru say so he's like he's like ranked number three right now he's like there's there's him number three and then kong is number two and then they got the goru say the heads of the world government the ones that control the entire world essentially so he's pretty high up there controls all the other admirals controls the ranks of marines and shit this guy is in he's large and in charge all right now um the next the first time we see him actually fight in the story is during marine fort of course uh you know we have that moment where jozu takes this he ch rips out this huge chunk of ice you know the size of a goddamn mountain it like dwarfs it's like the size of marine fort itself and he chucks it at Aki Inu, and Aki Inu just stands up and then uses his uh, Devil Fruit ability, Great Eruption, just turns his fist into magma and just melts all the ice at once. And that's that's how we learned his Devil Fruit ability and just how dangerous this guy is. Um, of course, we have the moment where he kills Ace. You know, that was uh, that was a pretty epic moment there. Uh, we He was manhandled by Whitebeard. And this is a scene, you know, you know I, I was reading something the other day, and uh, there, there's, you know, it looks like Aki Inu's power is grossly underestimated, I see, in the One Piece fandom. At least a little bit, because people are saying, like, yeah, man, Shanks could take out Aki Inu, no problem. Any of the Yonko could take out Aki Inu. Do you guys, do you guys remember this? Do you guys remember this? Whitebeard. Not, not just ordinary Whitebeard. Granted, Whitebeard, I mean, he's pretty banged up there. This is right after Ace died. Whitebeard is in a fit of rage. 
He's like 110% pissed off. Hockey-infused Gura Gura just slams right into the side of fucking Aka Inu and just quake bubble and just knocks him into the freaking ground. Aka Inu gets back up after this. He gets back up. He has like a few broken ribs and shit, but he gets back up and he's relatively uninjured. He's not, he's not, he's not like, he doesn't lose an arm or anything like that. He's not critically injured. He gets like a badass scar, maybe. That's it. I'm like, holy shit. No, the scar was from Aokiji, but holy shit, that's incredible. I'm sorry, but if you, if even if Whitebeard was heavily injured there, you take a Gura Gura hockey infused punch from Whitebeard right into the fucking rib. I mean, that, and you get back up from that. Not you, you continue to fight after that. He doesn't get taken out of the fight. Gets right back up, not right back up, but he gets back up and just continues the pursuit of Luffy. You got mad respect for me right there, man. You got mad respect for me right there. I mean, that that is that is incredible. He's also the one that dealt most of the heavy damage to Whitebeard. You know, Magma is pretty damn, pretty damn uh, powerful, you know. So even if you do have hockey and armament going on, Magma's probably going to break through that shit. It's like one of the strongest natural forces the world has to offer. So, you know, he's punching holes straight through Whitebeard, which is not just a testament for his power, but also a testament for Whitebeard being able to stand after getting a Magma hole punched right through his freaking chest cavity. Um, but yeah, a after the war, after the war, um... He uh, has a fight. There's a there's a moment where Sengoku steps down as the fleet admiral, and uh, you have to pick a new fleet admiral. And so Sengoku recommends uh, Aokiji as the new admiral, who has like the exact opposite. You know, Aki Aki Inu is absolute justice all the way, and and uh, 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 Kuzan or Aokiji Aokiji's his is uh, lazy justice, as he puts it. It's like the ultimate. It's like the opposites. You know, working together, not just figuratively, also literally, ice and magma. So they go and they they duke it out on Punk Hazard. They pick uh, Punk Hazard which at the time was just like a wasteland island, a deserted island. They fight on there. They fight on uh, Punk Hazard. And because of their fight, because of their warring abilities, and also maybe because of their awakening devil fruits, the actual island itself to this day, even at long after their fight has ended, is now permanently changed. Half of it is, is filled with volcanoes and magma streams, and the other half is, is frozen. And I think that's because of the awakening of Devil Fruits, you know, like when when uh, Paramecia's awaken their Devil Fruits, as we've seen with Doflamingo, they're able to they're able to change their surroundings to like Doflamingo was able to change the buildings to string, you know, Zoan awaken fruits we see with like the Demon Guards in in in, in Pell Down and with Chopper's Monster Point, you know, they just become you know these incredibly strong beasts that can heal really fast and are incredibly powerful. And then we have yet to see an Elogia in their awakened state, but we can assume, I like to assume, that they can change the very weather them itself, you know, change the climate on an entire island permanently with their powers. So, Aokiji and, and, and Aki Inu fight, and you know, the fight lasts way longer than I expected, you know, you would think that magma, you know, would trump ice every day of the week, no problem, but the fight lasts a decent amount of time, I can't remember quite how long it was, uh, and the two of them were almost completely, you know, dead, they were on death's door, that's where uh, Aki Inu got his scar, that's how Aokiji lost his leg. Um, but it, it did come out. Aki Inu was the head, was the victor. So he became the new fleet admiral and kind of Aokiji just left. Aokiji's like, I'm not serving under you. I'm leaving. And he leaves and actually allies with the Blackbeard pirates at some point. Um, but yeah, yeah. Aki Inu is currently the fleet admiral and he's currently one of the biggest threats that the Straw Hats have to face. It's going to be, and Luffy has a grudge against him, not just because, you know, he has the scar on him that caused, you know, uh, you know, a Aki Inu, uh, caused the scar on Luffy's body, but he killed Ace. He killed his brother. He's responsible for a lot of other heinous shit throughout the world. It's going to be, at some point in this story, and this is something that I'm really hoping for, you know, that it, 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 it fills me with happiness that I know that at some point in the story, at some point, it's going to be, it's going to be Luffy versus Aki, you know. It's going to happen. It could be, it could be five years from now, it could be eight years from now, I don't know. But at some point in this story, Luffy versus Aki, you know, is going to fucking happen. Uh, Luffy's probably going to have way more abilities at that point, going to be way stronger. I don't think he stands a chance against Aki Inu right now. Um, but uh, it's going to be wild. It's going to be wild, and I cannot wait for that. 
But yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's Aki Inu's character right now. We don't really know. He hasn't actually played that much of a role in the uh, the current story after the time skip, after we knew what happened on Punk Hazard. Uh, we've seen him a few times. He's had some movie pre presences and like Film Z and all that shit. Um, but for the most part, uh, he's just kind of the commander. We've yet to see what he's really going to do. He has a much more, of, of course, given how the differences between him and Sengoku are, you know, Sengoku was a little bit more lenient, like how uh, he lets Shanks take Whitebeard's corpse and, and, and Ace's corpse out to get buried, you know. Uh, Sengoku was kind of sympathetic to their cause, uh, but Aki Inu ain't having none of that shit. A Aki Inu is like, if you're a Marine and you're useless, you're going to be, you're going to even consider for a second that pirates are not all scumbags, then you will you will feel the wrath of my magma fist, you know, like it was Kobe. You know, Kobe's like, come on, guys, we already, we already won. We already beat the pirates. All of our Marines are dead. I mean, a lot of them are dead. Can't we just kind of stop the fighting? And, and Aki Inu's like, no, you're useless. How dare you? How dare you say that we need to stop fighting? We will not stop fighting until every one of these pirate motherfuckers are dead. That's when we'll stop fighting. That's Aki Inu. Um, he's, he's, <laughs> he's, uh, very serious. <laughs> Um, he doesn't take his, his morals are obscure are, are obscured. It's he's taking that ideal of absolute justice to its insane degree. Direct orders from the world government does not fuck around is not going to be swayed by people. He's not the kind of character that Luffy's just going to be like, why are you doing this? Please stop. And he's going to be like, maybe no, it's going to be like, it's going to be a fight to the death or a fight until you can't, you can't move anymore. That's what it's going to be with Aka, you know, you're right. Um, but yeah, uh, I like his character. I like, he's not my favorite admiral. I like other admirals a little bit better. But uh, yeah, uh, and it's testament because I didn't really have any, you know, I usually pick some justification for the order of these videos. Like with the, uh, when we did the Warlords, I had like a, like a roulette sort of determination. It was like random. Uh, when we did the war, when we did the Yonko, I did it in the order they were revealed in the story. With Aki Inu, I just wanted to talk about him first because he's such... He's such a commanding presence in the story, and he's so fucking badass, you know, it's just like you have to kind of start with him, because after, you know, like, like, okay, we're gonna start with Aki, you can't have Aki Inu be last, okay, you have to start off with him, alright? Um... Yeah, and oh, by the way, one more thing. Uh, we're going to get more into this when we talk about Fujitora, but uh, the thing is there his connection with Fujitora. So Fujitora was enlisted in the world government after after Aka Inu became the, the fleet admiral because, of course, you have the three admirals and then the fleet admiral. Sengoku steps down, Aokiji leaves, and Aka Inu becomes the new fleet admiral. So there's two positions you need to fill. Kizuru remains, his, remains in his position. So you're like, all right, so it's up to Aka Inu to pick these two slots, and he selected uh, Fujitora. Fujitora and uh, the uh, the new guy we don't know yet. Uh, Ryu, hold on, I keep, for, I keep I think it's like Ryu Kyogu or something like that, but I always fuck up his name. Um, it's uh, no, it's hold on, shit. Well, this is at the end. This is at the end of the video. It's fine. It's okay. It's okay if I mess up something two seconds into the video because then I have to fuck I have to fuck the whole thing and start all over. But uh, for right now. We have, uh, yeah, Ryo Kyugu or something, whatever. He's only been shown in silhouette so far. We don't know anything about him. Uh, he's the Green Bull. Fujitora is the uh, Wisteria, um, uh, oh, sorry, the, uh, yeah, Wisteria um, Tiger. So, anyway, his connection with him, right? Uh, they seem to have, like, somewhat of a good, you know, they're on good terms with each other, and it seems like Aki Inu was like, yeah, Fujitora, he, you're, you're the man for the job, you can do this, you know? And uh, Fujitora, though, doesn't have the same ideals as Aki Inu does. Maybe he did it first, but he, he, he just got enlisted as, like, the draft. He wasn't, like, a, a Marine for a long time. And so Fujitora, during the events of Dressrosa, he sees all this shit going on and he's like the world government do they think they're gods or something like that like he, he's obviously he's against it but at the same time he's like conflicted because he's like i can't really go against it but they're doing horrible things that's not the kind of conflict that aki inu has aki inu does not have that conflict at all but uh it's interesting so maybe there might be a conflict later down the line between fujitora and aki inu that would be cool to see but anyway we'll get to him later on anyway hope you guys enjoyed and you know what um i'm gonna leave up a poll up here i'm gonna leave a poll for you guys to vote on what uh who's the next admiral i'm going to do not really doing it in any particular order uh i should mention though we're not covering rio kyugi we're not covering the new guy yet we don't know anything about him we literally know nothing we know his name we know his epitaph the green uh green bowl we don't know anything about his abilities we don't know anything about his personality we know he has wavy hair i can't do a video about that i'm sorry i need a little bit more shit to go off of even even um Edward uh, Weevil. We knew at least a little bit about him that I could go off of, but uh, this guy is too new. So, Kizaru, Fujitora, and uh, Aokiji. 
Uh, those are going to be the three other admirals we're going to discuss here. Maybe Sengoku. Fuck, I'll throw Sengoku in there. This is going to be kind of a short list. I'll throw Sengoku in there. So you get to decide between four people who I'm going to discuss next. And then in the next video, I'll do the same thing and we'll kind of whittle it down that way. That seems fun. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed the video. This will be Techie 101 signing out. Always remember, keep in mind, justice is always, uh, it's never as clear as it seems. Justice is those who have it in power. That's what justice is. All right, later guys.